Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Welcome to Cracking the Horsebeak Code. We welcome you to take the journey with us as we explore the horse's language, mind, and heart. Welcome to Cracking the Horse Beat Code. I'm Laura Wilsey here with Sharon Wilsey, and we are here today to talk to you about how horses are really communicating with each other in a herd. Yeah, and this is a big, important topic because the foundation of why we do what we do and how we do it is all about watching how horses communicate with each other. And that includes important topics like, are they assertive or are they aggressive? And the other topic is, what are they trying to create in a healthy horse herd? And what we've discovered is, first of all, in a healthy horse herd, Horses are trying to create a family system. Most horses are weaned from their mothers and they go out in the world and all horses land with other horses. So it's kind of like a big collection of foster kids. And they have to figure out how to create a cohesive system. When you see horses in nature, it is a family group. Mm -hmm. It's the mamas and the papas and the babies and they're all figuring it out and it's a big healthy family system and they all look out for each other. So in a domestic situation, they're trying to recreate this. And the most important piece that horses want to recreate is what we call inner zero, which is what brings us back to the topic of assertive versus aggressive. And some of the questions we get from people, like some of the first questions is, but I was taught to be dominant. Yes. And when you watch horses in the herd, and especially in this video, that you're gonna see. The horses are navigating through their paddock with precision. And they are going to say, no thank you to you, joker horse. No thank you to you. You guys need to go to your corners. And then the mentors are constantly directing and orchestrating mm -hmm. these joking type animals. And we'll go over some of the roles in the herd is what we call it with horse speak on how each player within the herd has a specific role and job mm -hmm. and they might need to assert themselves or they might just need to stand still and hold space mm. so that the other horses, because Sharon mentioned zero, mm -hmm. that's the herd that's at zero is what you want. And so that the, the ones that are running around, the mentor is standing there at zero, you should follow my lead mm -hmm. in calming down. And if the mentor starts running, then you know that there might there's, be something going on there's a problem. out in the wilderness. Right, right. Because again, we're, we, what we're looking at is how do domestic horses take the instincts that they were given, uh, coupled with what have they been able to learn about? So did they have good elders and guides and templates to learn from? And then each horse seems to kind of have their natural way. So some horses are sort of born and want to move towards being a protector. And some want to move towards being a mentor or a teacher or a peacemaker. You know, they have these different um, natural inclinations. And then if they got good uh, exposure, they're going to grow up into one mm -hmm. of those roles pretty pretty naturally. But sometimes we'll see horses did not get good exposure. They got overstressed, trained too hard, too young, things like that. And it's almost like they they didn't grow up all the way. And then you'll see a problem horse later in life, or maybe even a problem joker. So in this video, we have two kinds of jokers. We have one that's a four or five year old uh, Arabian gelding, and we have two joker minis. And I just have to say, that's why this is one of my favorite films, mm. because who doesn't want to see two cute little mini twins? But they're two year olds and they're really sassy and they're just, they want to play. So all these joker youngsters just want to play with each other. It's nothing wrong with that, but 
the whole herd is going to be on the go watching out for these youngsters all the time. And so the elders and betters are trying to teach them how to also put a time out on that yes. and find some inner zero. Because the number one goal is for the horses to have safety and then also protection. Mm. So if there's jokers running around, then it's compromising. Mm -hmm. Like if there was actually a wolf or some kind of predator did come through and they really needed to start running. Which in a domestic setting, we're not saying wolves and predators are coming through, but we've known situations of someone's dog got into a pen and tried to you know, hurt a, a horse, or um, we have heard of bears jumping in. So it's not really, is there a real and imminent threat, but rather that that's how horse herds are designed. They're designed to um, model a certain kind of behavior where there's a peace and quiet on the inside. That way they can rest and digest. And if they're not getting enough rest and digest, then they're gonna remain stressed. And it's so important that when we are working with a horse that we have take in mind that these animals are looking all the time of their surroundings and where are their friends and where is the water tub in many different aspects mm -hmm. of the environment that they're taking into account. And there are times when horses may not be able to go with you in a quick way because they might be the mentor. And they're like, I don't know if I can leave those guys behind. Right, they get worried about it. They do. Right. And so sometimes when we get called in to, my horse won't go with me, it's like, okay, so we take into the whole account, all the animals, all the horses that are within that paddock and be like, and start labeling their role in the herd. So therefore we'd be like, okay, this horse is a mentor, teacher, or protector, and that could be a reason why they're going three or five steps and they need to stop and they turn around and look at the herd to make sure that they're still, in, still doing what they should be doing. And that brings us back to the assertive versus aggressive. And so what, what we'll see, and we'll talk about this a little bit later too, but what we'll see is that um, people have a hard time knowing how do we apply this in training? Right, because one of the reasons why it's hard to apply something like pressure and release. All right, this is a term in training, you're gonna hear the word pressure and release. Nothing wrong with pressure and release technically. The challenge comes from not understanding how to observe the horse processing. And horses have to process information, they take it in, right? But then they have to process it through their body all the way through to all four feet. And usually when they have like an aha, they like, mm, oh, I get it. You'll see something shift in the hind end. Maybe the tail will move or they kind of cock a hip or they kind of drop their head up and down. And they kind of, there's this moment where they go, like we would, we, when if you're thinking, 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 someone's explaining something to you and you're thinking about it and, you, and all of a sudden you go, I get it. You know, we do that intake of breath and we kind of move our body and they have a similar thing. Well, a lot of people just, first of all, don't know to look for it. And second of all, don't have enough patience for that. Mm. So when you go back in time and you look at the writings of like horse masters or horse whispers from like even thousands of years ago, like Xenophon, for instance, you're going to see that some of the best in, in history are always talking about um, not breaking horses, but gentling them and working with them to build their confidence and trust in a slow, quiet way. There's, um, I've heard it in different, coming from different places. You're going to get more done at halt and walk than you're ever going to get done at canter because that's where everybody can slow down and think. So when we're watching this video, obviously these horses are using their own language and they're using it in a way that's um, very precise and specific. And so if they need to do a one and done assertive moment, they can. And when they do the one and done assertive moment, it's the exact amount of intensity that's right for the moment and they drop right back to zero. That's what's important. Mm. You'll see that these there's a protector, a mentor, a teacher, and when they kind of make a point, they go right back to zero. And that going right back to zero, that's the teachable moment. That's where they say, ah, well done. Yes, and you can see them pausing in mm -hmm. the conversation when the mentor comes and talks to the Arabian mm -hmm. and says, you know, let's lower your head, mm -hmm. let's calm down. 
And then there's a like all done, like a swish tail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're all done with that part well, of the, the conversation. Teacher backs him up, which is a really cool moment. Yeah. That teacher horse backing him up using greeting and then bridge of the nose. Mm-hmm. And then when he uh, has him back up, everything stops. Yeah. And they breathe and they have patience. So for us, learning how to have a better training relationship with horses mm-hmm. means being able to develop our eye to see processing and what processing looks like as well as the patience to be and and, you know and also the patience to generate curiosity for us like it's not so boring if we find it fascinating right we try to do this to make it fascinating oh absolutely and that's the cool part about knowing and learning the buttons for example, that's what we call their interactive places on the body of the horse that you'll see specifically in this video, where, in this too. video, where the muzzle is going toward the shoulder or the cheek, mm-hmm. and so that or it's cheek going towards cheek or a muzzle going towards sit. Right. So there's, we'll show you a graphic of what those buttons look like, and it's just it's so neat to be able to watch that video. Mm. When we suggest to watch it multiple times because there's it's only a six and a half minute clip you're going to see but there's so much happening Mm -hmm. and so you can miss it and we did a good job Sharon's great at slowing it down and here's a teachable moment but when you're with a horse and you're trying to what are you saying or doing you're like whoa this is a lot to take in so that's why it's so neat to be able to have footage to Mm. look at with whether you're doing something with your horse or it's a horse on horse communication because there's so much happening and I just want to say that We've been studying this now for like 20 years. There's, we've put out three books and a DVD. We've got our, our online academy. We've got people all over the world that have been learning this because um, this is all based on solid evidence. So we're not just coming up like, this is my idea. This is, you can see it for yourself. One of the biggest things we hear people say to us when they first start learning a few like maybe they learn a few buttons or they learn a little bit about the roles in the, where they learn or something. the greeting or that's the greeting a big ritual. one just using your knuckle right to greet a horse hello and then lean away it's something as simple as that and they'll say to us i can't not see it now that i see it mm-hmm. i can't not see it i see it everywhere i see it all the time and i see horses coming to me going greet me greet me greet you know it's like it's an incredible bridge to cross right and that the horses are really precise Mm -hmm. and that is the biggest thing that i think i've learned personally with this language system of horse speak is that there's no accidents Mm. and that everything means something is one of our mottos because they are not just standing in a field they are communicating constantly and they are helping or they're navigating hey can you move your head a little bit this way or let's go over to the water trough like they are having conversations and they like good manners they do healthy horses in healthy herds that are functioning well that are not overly stressed or they're not hiding pain or they're not suffering from something they like to have good manners amongst themselves and with each other Mm -hmm. so one of the things you're going to see the elders really coaching these the kids is to have some manners and you'll see there's a moment actually hysterical with the one of the minis when he jumps up on yes the mini protect it's just like there's no manners you've gone there now (laughs) like it just shows how they're not zero (laughs) they're not zero (laughs) not zero and then with the patience Mm. and that's like where we talked about the assertive versus aggressive and when you watch this video All you're going to see is the patience of these mentors, especially Mm -hmm. the black horse, where she is just standing space. space. And then even with the the mini, when you see the other mini do something silly, silly and the patience that he has for that. So that behavior. And so it's so important when we are working with a horse that we need to keep in mind that they have four feet And that they need to arc that entire body. We could say, you know, arc like a canoe. Mm -hmm. Think about turning a canoe and how long it takes to actually make a turn. It's similar to a horse. Right. So even if you're just saying, oh, we're going to walk up there, we're going to turn left, we we can on two feet just Just turn left. Then move. But they have to, there's whole body around. So, and a lot of times we find that humans were accidentally knocking the horses off balance because of we can just flip so then you'll see horses get 
repeatedly like frustrated because they feel like, oh, my person's not noticing my processing. They're not noticing what all my feet are doing. I feel like I'm scrambling. I'm getting frustrated. And then they act out. They, they displace. They get nippy. They get resistant. They get fearful. They get whatever. So part of the reason that we show videos like this and we have this educational platform is to say nine times out of 10, when if horses are, are displacing and they're acting in a they're doing behaviors that we don't want, there's something else going on that they haven't been able to communicate. And it requires us to use our big brain and notice them in a little bit of a different way. Like something as simple as you're you're leading a horse or you're riding a horse and you say, turn right and or go forward. Let's just even call it go forward. And you you have you want them to put their right foot forward. Well, they have, these are the choices they have. Well, I could put my foot here or here or here or here or there. All of that to me is a possibility of my right front foot. And then I got three others to follow that. So where did you want me to go? And we, you know, the person might be sitting up there and the horse's feet were like this. And so you're saying, well, move your right foot that way. And they're like, well, well. And then their hind end might be doing something else as well. So mm -hmm. therefore, it's like, how do I... And you can, when you do slow down, literally you can watch them thinking and, and go, leaning. Oh, I have to. And I have to do this and that. And it might take 20 seconds. And that's like, if you have a request from your horse and then you say, count to 20, nine times out of 10, they will They'll have an answer moving. for you. They'll start moving. Yeah. They will. If, yeah. But they're not going to be like that. That's just really because there's too much flesh to move through. Yes, there's a lot of body there to figure out how to do the request that you've asked them to do. Yeah. But what we have seen is the the better we are at observing, being patient, and just giving a request, counting to twenty, simple little rules of thumb like that. When the horse gets it, they go. Oh, I got it. Yeah. And the next time you ask, they're like, I remember what that was. And they're excited to, sh to do it for you. And they're excited to please you. And this is the difference between being assertive, which could mean just say, you know, say what I say, mean what I say, but not aggressive. Like, gosh, darn it, horse, do it. Because in that change of going from assertive to aggressive, the horse might get scared or shut down or worried or just troubled in some way. And then they feel like, oh, no, I just got to scramble. I don't really know what the answer is. And that's was. the big difference because we sometimes do need to be like, and we must do this activity. We need to get on the trailer. We must go see the vet, what have you. Right. But then it's like when you flip to that aggressive part, that is where we lose our zero a hundred percent. And then we are now triggered into high emotion. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's going to take us like 20 minutes to get back down into our zero. Cause we have to flesh out all mm -hmm. that cortisol that got triggered. So it's so important to be able to practice being zero for ourselves as well. Cause so that, we want that in our horses mm -hmm. because we want them to be ready, willing and able to learn and be with us and do the activities we want to do with them. And then we also have to be mindful of ourselves because as soon as we maybe get too excited inside, we get all zingy and I'm a basketball player mm -hmm. and I have a lot of zing in my body. And for me in my personal journey, working with horses and asking for movement is to not get too zingy because they go, ah, they go, they do. It's too much. And I really much. had to be like, whoa. I just did that. I just <laughs> caused that horse to like jump in the air and I just went like, Bing! and it was like that. Zzz! It was like way too loud. So these, these animals are so cool. They are cool. And that they are so, the smallest thing can be so massively important. important. Mm. Mm -mm. So with this video that's coming up, we're going to see that there are a few moments where one of the leaders does something very assertive, um, but you're going to notice that there's there's no harm happening to anyone, and even if a, the teacher comes in and is kind of chewing on the Joker's rump at one moment, that that's a button, and what he's doing is saying, "You need to shut down, son. You, you really need to get rid of someone." Like that's Laura being a basketball player. <laughs> And that's the teacher coming going, you need to put some of that away. You got a little bit too much zing going on there. And that's really why he's doing it. So as we watch this, again, as Laura said, um, you're going to want to see this piece a couple of times because there's so many things this to look at. This is such a fun video. Yeah. I love this video. All right. So let's roll.
Today we're going to talk about roles in the herd. What we've learned is there's many leaders in healthy herd. It's all about the power of presence, assertiveness versus aggressive dominance. We're going to see that assertiveness here in about one second. Here we have this gray horse is doing a greeting ritual. Horses have rituals for everything. As he approaches, he's a little bit too much. She says, assertive, one and done. That's all there needs to be. Power of inner zero is that leaders don't lose their cool. Inner zero actually gives them the edge. This is what we've learned. We want to have that edge too. Here comes a teacher, the white horse. The black horse is the mentor. And of course, the joker is that gray who is too much. Now we enter twin mini jokers. This is going to be fun, folks. This is a big, healthy herd with lots of youngsters that are also in their joker phase. You see the white teacher tries to guide him, but game on. There they go, playing. What's wrong with this? Nothing. But the elders in this herd want to teach, coach, and prepare these horses to be good herd members. So in comes this mentor, peacemaker, and protector. The power of this protector, this little mini, is not about him being aggressive. He's totally inner zero, and that's why he can be assertive with charisma, not with power. Here he's telling him, hey, sit down, stop running, chill out, put your head down. You know, I don't want you chasing those minis. So here comes the white teacher to collect him. Don't worry, I've got him. He says, back up and chill out. He's using a button on the bridge of the nose there to tell that joker to back up. Of course, the joker says, I don't want to. I don't want to back up. I want to play. He says, really, really, you need to back up, behave yourself, chill out. Okay, fine, I'll back up. And that is it. So this is assertive. Now the protector says, you know, you're too big to play with them. So he sniffs his girth button. You're with us. You're on the same team, but you're too big. So the white teacher says, come on, come with me. He turns him around, turn, backs him up, turns him around. Come with me. Assertive, not aggressive. Walk off. Let's go together. The mentor horse is looking at him, beckoning. Come on over here. I've made a nice place. We could chill out together. Teacher says, yeah, let's go over there. We can have a nice, chill, relaxing moment. You could learn about chewing on those logs or we could do lots of other things but you're not going to play with those twin minis even though you like them he turns them again all right let's stay right here right where the mentor said so teacher says sit button sit down pay attention son that's the sit button there at the back of the rump and you can see he's using his hind end to relax that hip here comes the twin minis the mentor has beckoned them in to say this is a good place to chill out and they kind of accept it. All right, maybe we'll chill with the mentor for a minute, mentor mama. And it's a good moment. The protector's watching. There's the other mentor. That's That paint horse is another mentor. And the other one with his head sticking out, that's the peacemaker. He doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Joker's on the move. Mentor and teacher have words there for a moment. And now the teacher says, don't worry, I've got him. I'm going to keep him moving, but slowly. You notice this again, I want you to back up, okay. I want you to back up and turn, okay. He's trying to guide him and guide his ideas. The mentor there is ready to catch him. See, she's got an eye on him. He, he comes around and he sees those minis, those mini jokers walking off. He says, ooh, I want to play. Protector says, nope, you're not getting in there. Sorry, buddy. Not on my watch. They're too little. And I know you're silly and they're silly. And you know what? No hard feelings. You know, check in with me. You're okay. I like you just fine, but you're really big. You can't play hard with those littles. So here he touches cheek button. This is important. Cheek button is the main button they use for good manners. So he's trying to tell him there, you know, it's you just got to have some good manners with these guys. They're younger than you and they're sillier than you. Here comes the mini joker right on cue looking to play. And so we have the protector gathers him up and the teacher gathers up the other joker. Isn't that amazing? Now here we're going to have the teacher goes back to that sit button, which he wants to say, settle down, calm down. And the protector's got the other mini and he's using the cheek button. So now we have the teacher uses his cheek to guide the, cho the joker away because he's saying we need to have good manners. Follow me. You need to learn something. And the teacher's using his cheek there to guide him. He says, follow me. At the same time, the protector's trying to, but he has to go to the follow me button on that little Joker Mini because the Joker Mini was just trying too hard to push through there. And then he guides him away as well. 
Now watch this. Both big and little jokers are complaining. Why well, don't want to? I want to play. I want to do something. And there's the mentor mama in the middle going, uh uh uh, kids. We need to settle. We can't just run around all day long. Uh, they almost got to play for a moment there, and it's blocked by that protector horse. With the power of his assertiveness and his zero, he says no. And seriously, I mean it. But notice here, even though he chased him off, there's no kicks. There's no bites. No one is hurting anyone. This is the difference between being assertive and being aggressive. He's in a timeout corner now. So the white horse comes and says, all right, buddy, see if you can keep your cool. Meanwhile, mentor protector are having a moment. They're kind of grooming and that lets them off the hook. There goes the minis. They're going to come in. Woo -hoo -hoo. And now look at him. Look at that joker being silly. Jokers are at it again. Notice the kindness that the protector has with them. And the mentor tries to block that other one from going to that joker. Now, <laughs> Protector has his hands full, man. These these three jokers, all they want to do is play all day. And that joker gets in the middle between protector and teacher. But, ha! Sneaky jokers, fun at last. They were just waiting for this moment to happen. The point is, roles in the herd are complex. There's a lot to learn. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Actually, we hope you enjoyed the video <laughs> because that is by far one of our favorite her dynamic videos it's it is so fun so much fun especially that last shot i know with them running towards the camera like we, we win we, we get to win. play <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with play no you know all kids play but that's a small area and it would be very easy for them to get to just too much too fast yeah. and then there's too many other horses around so those elders are trying to coach them on other things they could be doing with themselves and how to learn to have you know good manners and to kind of quiet down and there's time to play and there's a time to stop playing um we have seen sometimes horses that are put in together and they can't stop playing mm. we've known some horses that got moved on to a property and there's a teacher on that property and that young horse and that teacher play all day long but it's like sometimes we've seen the teacher can't get their point across and how they like to teach is through play and they're just like trying to get it through to the the joker or maybe the horse is, has joker attributes but maybe what's really going on is that that horse is a little bit stunted. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been through something, he's had some difficulties, and he, he hasn't learned how to find inner zero. So a lot of times you need different members of the herd. And when we have seen healthy herds, there will be a time when maybe a peacemaker steps in and says, um, just kind of blocks the joker from everybody else, like just just hang out or a mentor might come in and be like let's redirect you mm. let's redirect you into something more quiet or you have like maybe a prince or a princess or another type of horse that comes in that has you know other ideas like you know what let's play this way instead of playing that way so it's really interesting to kind of break down the way we've learned to see the personalities, the roles in the herd. Yeah, and sometimes if you do have two horses that can't settle and they're just constantly playing and running around, then typically they're basically the same type. Yeah, they so could be couple the same jo type. jokers, or they could be a couple sentries who are like, no, I'm the sentry, no, I'm the sentry, no, mm -hmm. I'm the sentry. So therefore, then you have there's they can't settle because no one is who's, who's able doing to this role like slow down and be in their zero be like okay take a breath mm -hmm. and let's regroup and figure this out so the a lot of times with horses that it's two a pair a third horse coming in can typically help this dynamic right right the common denominator of all of this is inner zero mm -hmm. it's the common denominator of any type of horse any role in the herd and that's why when we're teaching and coaching we try to help people find a level of inner zero. It's not inner zombie. You're not dull. Um, it means you're quiet enough and present enough that you can actually listen to what's going on. You can pay attention. You can be aware and not like lost in thoughts or just feeling frustrated because the horse isn't doing what I want them to do. And a lot of stuff that is typical human stuff. And 
why we wanted to show this video and really focus on assertive versus aggressive is there's moments in this video where there's you know there's somebody gets loud mm -hmm. somebody's very assertive about something but it's really one and done and they don't hurt each other no, especially that moment where the, the the mini mentor comes off the fence line and cuts off the arabian like the that first, was the first few seconds yeah and that was like, we call it laser beam eyes. And he's, he's like, like Nyeh. Nyeh. and this goes right over. But when he walks to him, he's doesn't bite him. He doesn't do any kind of aggression. He's like, hey, what's going on? And as he sniffs down what we call the buttons on that Arabian, the Arabian drops his head. Mm -hmm. Because that's what the protector is saying. Hey, buddy, cool, cool, cool your jets. And the Arabian goes, okay. And therefore, because he listens then he can come up and sniff what, what we call the girth button, which is like, you know, we're on the same team. Yeah. We're together. I just need you to calm down. Mm -hmm. So there's a, it's very interesting to see the interaction between the bubbles of personal space around the horses, the circles and arcs that they make, how they line up their movement patterns, the spots on the body that they specifically talk to to have different meaning, mm -hmm. and as well as the roles in the herd, and then let alone what we call the chessboard itself, which is how this particular paddock is set up with the places to go. And, you know, there's like the timeout trees and there's, there's a lot of things going and on. Why we call it the chessboard is you may not necessarily play chess, but most of us are aware that there are different players on the board and they all have specific movements they can do forward, backward, diagonal. And so there's just, a, there's mimic. rules, there's rules yeah. to that. And so then it's, and it's a strategy. Right. And so then with the horses, it's similar because they are also strategizing. Right. And you can see that watching this video where you're seeing that mini also comes from another angle mm -hmm. and cuts off that Arabian Shoot. too. From, you know, Locked. 15 feet away or right. whatever. So it's just so fascinating. And then the trees play a different mm -hmm. role. The water tub, the gates. And the mentors. And this is why the mentors don't move too much. Right. Because their job is to hold a square. Mm -hmm. Hold a position. And whenever those horses go into that area, that's what the meaning or the intention is of the space the mentor is holding. Mm -hmm. So for humans, sometimes we... You know, try to ride a mentor type horse, and we're like, gosh, this horse is a plug. They don't want to move too much. But from their perspective, they're like, right, because I'm holding a square. I'm keeping everybody else calm. Mm -hmm. And that's just sometimes how they function, even with us. Yeah. And with that being said, there's, you know, talk about in the industry about, oh, that horse is, you know, that's the alpha horse. And typically... You meaning like a dominant, Yeah, aggressive like a dominant, horse. aggressive horse. And what that typically is, is the joker, who right. is not zero, or, and he's moving the, everybody around. Or, or a horse who's displacing. Right. Which we didn't talk about that. We didn't. Today. That's a, that would be a whole other But that's show. usually aggressiveness. Usually when there's a, what we call a bossy horse, who's driving people away and mean and really making contact, not just this one and done assertive. Right. They're like driving. Actually biting. Actually getting to kicking, that aggressive place. Getting to that aggressive place. There's something that's getting displaced. There's usually... A lot one of times a, it's physical. One of a couple of things underneath. Yeah. Right? Physical pain. Number one mm -hmm. thing. There's so much subclinical stuff that can be going on with a horse that's not, you know, three-legged lame, but subclinically they they have, a, you know, a sore shoulder. They have a, or a their pole, pole pendant, is sore. Or their pole or their their teeth sore. are wrong. Or, Just like us. We wake up and we may be like, why is my neck killing me this morning? I took a funny step and my knee hurt. Yeah, you got out of bed and, yeah, fell off. <laughs> fell out of bed you know so it's like similarly for the horses their stuff that if they're outside over the night or even in a stall overnight or any time of day they can slip fall run into something hit their head overuse you know. it during a training session yeah there's so many different reasons why a horse would have some kind of ache or pain right and so it's just it when we look at a herd dynamic we're saying how interesting that horse is doing that thing right huh that one's doing this behavior Let's mm -hmm. kind of figure out why. Let's look at the whole thing and evaluate all of the pieces. Yeah. And so if you want to learn more about Horse Speak and go deeper into the different topics that we've covered, you can visit our website, SharonWilsey.com, and you can find we have online webinars. We have online courses. We actually have a weekly club where this is what we do. Like you witnessed today on this video, we analyze our members' videos. So then you could send in your own personal video 
and we do stop action and whether you're with your horse or it's frame by frame this is actually this yeah exactly and this particular video is from our club and this is out in europe this video so this is so neat to be able to meet a worldwide community mm -hmm. on the horse speak club where our members are the stars so we look forward to seeing you next time at cracking the horse speak code see ya take care